Hey guys, my name is Ravi Sharma and I'm the founder and buyer's agent here at Search Property. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another episode of Search Property TV. If you're new here, please do subscribe. We're bringing out two to three videos every single week about personal finance and real estate investing in Australia. Now guys, today's video, as the title suggests, is how much passive income I make through my real estate investments. Now, straight from the outset, I wanna make this very clear. This is not a flex. This is not like a video about, hey, look at me, I'm amazing. It's more about inspiring others and actually showing you that these strategies that our teams are working with our clients on, they actually work because I've done it for the last six years. So one, I wanna inspire, and two, I wanna show you how easy this can actually be, especially when you can leverage the experience and mistakes from someone who's actually gone out and done it actively. So guys, let's kick in. Few things straight from the top is that the way I calculate this is minus my expenses, what income I am left with at the end of the month. Now, some of my loans are principal and interest, so that's where I'm paying a portion of the principal down as well as the mortgage interest uh, that is incurred as a cost. However, as the purpose for this video, I want to just put the interest aside as a cost uh, and all the extra positive income that I make, uh, I can either put back into the actual property, save it uh, for a deposit, or it's part of my principal that I pay down part of my repayments. So as some of you may know, I actually own 12 properties across three states in Australia, and I happened to do that before the age of 27. So I've got some numbers here on the screen down here, and I'm gonna put them up now. So monthly mortgage interest is 8,274. My monthly rates, which includes council rates and water rates, as well as insurance and management fees, comes to $4,511 per month. That makes my total expenses 12,785. Now my rent that I earn from all my properties is 18,026 a month which means my net passive income per month is 5,241, which if I was to break it down across the year, it would actually be 62,892. So yes, uh, a great position to be in. And I can tell you now that when I started investing six years ago, I really didn't think this was possible. I walked in with no strategy and quickly learned that after my first purchase, I really needed a direction. I needed to understand that there was more to just investing and then hoping something would happen because that's just speculating. That's not actually investing. So my biggest advice in this video is that you really need a good foundation. Now, getting carried away with $63,000 as passive income after six years sounds great. However, you need to have the building blocks to get you there. The small deals become big deals, smaller the properties become bigger properties. And that's why too many people are getting caught up with, oh, I wanna build a duplex and you know be a developer, or I wanna renovate and quickly flip this property with good fundamentals, long-term views on these properties. Uh, you don't really see financial freedom unless you're actively getting yourself involved in doing these projects year on year. For me, it's been always very important to mitigate my risk and ensure that I can maintain lifestyle. So for me, I wanted a passive income stream. How I did that was by building the foundation blocks with good quality properties in good fundamental areas and that had capital growth as well as strong cash flow. So once you've built out your sort of foundation of properties, you really then want to leapfrog into more accelerated strategies or tactics that can include renovating and flipping. That can include building a duplex or building multi-unit properties and be able to sell that off as a developer. So something else to consider when you are building out your portfolio is that once you have the foundation ready, you can leapfrog anywhere you like. However, it becomes very hard if you don't know what your end goal is. So my biggest takeaway from even getting a portfolio of this size is that you need to understand why you started how those goals have adapted and having regular check-ins on your portfolio. Without the regular check-ins, you're basically gonna be lost because you might have fallen through with some of those properties that really needed some attention and love, now have caused bigger issues later down the track. 
or there may be properties that really need to be sold because they're at the height of the property clock and so that's when you need to take advantage of the cycle and by doing so you can actually accelerate your growth and long-term wealth so again as i explained this video is not a flex by any means this is my personal investment journey and the fact that i get to document this the fact that i can share it with you is amazing in itself because looking back at this in five years time it'll be amazing to know how those little building blocks have become bigger blocks of property really there are different ways different strategies different tactics there's so much out there and it's so easy to get confused which ultimately leaves you paralyzed to actually do anything so guys if you haven't already subscribe to the channel the videos that i'm bringing out I want to bring education. I'm not simply out here trying to put clickbait articles out. I'm not trying to get the attention of people just for the sake of the attention. I'm here trying to educate you. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining me on yet another episode. If you liked this video, smash the thumbs up. If you're inspired, let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what your goals are and what's important to you. Is it cash flow or capital growth? Guys, leave a comment down below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.